Hello everyone, I am Pepino here, back with another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. One of you guys in the comments asked for a tutorial on a satellite, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, first things first, we need our uh, capsule, our command uh, module, and these three bottom ones here, these are for satellites, um, and my personal favorite is this one here just for the looks factor basically um, now the first thing I like to do on all my satellites is add all of these scientific elements uh, the antennas here we'll put on the top um, the antennas right now are just for aesthetics but later on in a future update you're gonna need them to keep communication with your satellite uh, thermometers, things like that, accelerometer, everything like that. So we'll put all of those on there. We don't need both types of antennas, uh, but we could if we wanted to. But we'll just stick with one for now. Uh, then, the next thing, you're going to need to remember this. This is very important. With satellites, you are going to need a power source. And so we're going to put some battery packs on here. I'll put like three of those, throw on a couple of these on this side just because we have instruments on the other side so it'll balance it out and we'll do that. So there we go, we've got battery supply but we are also going to need a way to get power to the batteries because otherwise they will run out. So we're going to put solar panels. Uh, I like to put two things of solar panels on uh, just like this and angle them up a little bit like that. Uh, the only problem is then we're not going to be able to open this antenna but if we put the antenna um, off to the side that should fix that so that's what I'll do. I'll just put it sticking out to the side like that and then uh, on top here I like to put a parachute just in case you want to ever deorbit your satellite and save it for whatever reason you don't really need to but it's just something I like to do um, alright then uh, what we're gonna put on there I'm gonna put an SAS on there and uh, we can put some RCS fuel and maybe some RCS thrusters up here on the battery packs. Uh, if we need to control it, then we can. Um, and I can do maybe even two things of RCS fuel. So there we go. That's our satellite. Uh, may, may not look the best, but you can alter the design however you want. You don't need this many battery packs. You wouldn't actually need any of these, probably, as long as you have the battery packs on there but like I said it is important to remember you need some sort of battery pack and some way to generate power now back to the generating power one thing I do like to do as well is put a couple generators on it even if you have solar panels generators are always a good idea in case something goes wrong uh, with your solar panels for whatever reason so we'll put eight generators on there. So there we go. Now it's a bit uh, full, lots of tiny little instruments in that uh, space there, but that's fine. So there we go. That is our satellite, and that's the part that for sure is going to be uh, orbiting whatever planet you're going to want to put it around. So then we'll go ahead and add a decoupler to the bottom there and that's that now we gotta worry about getting the satellite up into orbit so I'm gonna put this and that right there now that is gonna be for positioning the satellite once it's out in space and now we need to worry about getting the satellite actually up into space. Um, let's go with six uh, decouplers here. 
and then six more fuel tanks right like that um, and there we go we'll zoom out take a look we'll add six more here with this like that uh, we're gonna want some struts just to make sure this all stays together nicely so I'll put a couple sets of struts three should be sufficient uh, for this stage of the rocket here and make sure that we've got this uh, all set up correctly which it looks like we do and now this could actually be enough to get it into orbit around Kerbin but I'm gonna actually add a little bit of more power uh, might be a bit of overkill for a small satellite but that's fine I uh, just want to make sure we get it up into orbit and so we'll use some of these big tanks to get it up again we're gonna need struts to make sure it doesn't all fall apart and on this one I'll do four sets of struts just like that and then I'm gonna actually also do some struts connecting the uh, inner layer here with the outer layer just to hold it together a little more and make it a bit more stable uh, there's the old saying you ask yourself what was wrong with your rocket and if it fell apart you add more struts if it didn't make it into space you add more rockets and then you repeat the process so let's let's add some solid fuel boosters as well just for the sake of overkill uh, just to show off a couple more of the parts here uh, for those of you who don't really know much about them these solid fuel boosters are gonna give us whoops, what happened there these solid fuel boosters are gonna give us a bunch of power right at the start and we'll just add couple struts because why not alright uh, so we're gonna want the solid fuel boosters and these big engines to fire at the same time and we're gonna want these engines to fire as soon as we disconnect the big uh, fuel tanks so there we go there is our satellite uh, and we'll just call it satellite and save and we are ready to launch this thing. Um, all right, so we gotta clear the launch pad and proceed. Okay, when I uh, got to the launch pad, one of these, actually, I think two of them, two of those fell off and exploded. So we need to uh, redo our design a little bit. So I'm gonna add some more struts because it fell apart so you add more struts okay so I added some more struts a third thing connecting each of the solid boosters as well as uh, four struts connecting each of the solid fuel boosters to the big orange tanks and I added some of these uh, launch stability enhancers this is just gonna raise it up off the ground and give you a little better uh, launch stability so we're going to want to make sure those release at the same time we fire our engines. So we'll save it, and now we're ready for launch, and hopefully nothing falls apart this time. Okay, there it is. Success. Nothing has fallen apart, and we are ready for launch. Just make sure you're going to clear the tower, which we will. Uh, okay, so we'll turn on our SAS, full throttle on the engines, and firing in three, two, one. All right, there it goes. And uh, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear me over these solid fuel boosters. Uh, they're usually pretty loud. So I'll zoom out a bit so they're not quite as, oh shoot, 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 shoot. I almost overheated our engines, I forgot about that. These orange tanks, you gotta remember, you don't need to go full throttle on them, they overheat. I was 
paying more attention to how loud it was going to be. And I forgot about that. So yeah, don't go full throttle uh, with these orange tanks. Uh, but we're still going to be going up at quite a nice speed. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and the solid fuel boosters are almost out. So we'll separate that stage. And there we go. Let's start doing our turn right now so we can get a nice orbit going. And there we go. And we'll take a look at our orbital map right there. And if you remember my tutorial on how to get an orbit, you just gotta start getting your turn. And then once you get up into uh, space, you're gonna have to burn to elongate this trajectory. And we're gonna put this thing in orbit around Kerbin. So go these tanks are getting close to being out um, so here we go and we fire the last stage and everything went well so now I'm just gonna have to be burning in uh, this general direction here and oh boy, zoom out. We got a pretty large trajectory already. So that's good. And now I'm actually going to not burn a ton right now. And burn more in this direction. Because we don't need the orbit to be too far from the planet. But uh, we do want to have it out of the atmosphere which is above uh, 70,000 meters, which our apoapsis is fine, and we are actually out of the atmosphere now. So what I'm gonna do is just start burning this direction right here, and that should extend our trajectory by quite a bit and get us into an orbit, and then we can worry about making the orbit pretty and uniform once we uh, get it. We should have plenty of fuel for that, so I'm not too worried. And here we go, you can see our trajectory extending and our apoapsis getting farther away and uh, uh, gaining altitude. Now, I'm actually going to throttle down for just a bit until we get over to our apoapsis or closer to it, you just don't want to pass your apoapsis, that's all. So right here, and then we will start our burn up once again, and that should very quickly extend our trajectory, which you can see happening right there, and pretty soon it should uh, go full circle here and create an orbit. Then, what is our apoapsis at? Around 150, so we want to get our periapsis out to near there. 155, so we're just going to speed up till we get to our apoapsis again. Like this, and uh, we'll just do another nice little burn to help extend our periapsis. Now this is also extending our apoapsis. If we get into the orange a little ways, it can slow down uh, how much we're actually extending our apoapsis, I believe, or at least it should. And now, alright, you can see we're getting our apoapsis is actually going down, which is a good thing for now. You can see we're at 158 ish by 153, and so now we gotta wait till we get closer to our apoapsis again to do more of a burn and uh, you know we're we're pretty uniform right now within 5000 but we can get it to be a little more um, we'll turn on our RCS to get over here rather than burning because if we burned that would uh, extend our apoapsis a lot right now which we don't want so here we go. Let's get 
right over here and it shouldn't be much of a burn but uh, it should be enough to extend this out 159 by 161 and we could keep improving on that but uh, for the sake of time you know you see how we did that you burn uh, in prograde at the apoapsis to extend your periapsis and then you burn in prograde here to extend your apoapsis and in retrograde to shrink them but that is how you do that and that is a successful satellite. Oh, we'll turn off our RCS because RCS and SAS on have a tendency to waste uh, fuel. So now we'll extend our solar panels just like that and they will turn to face the sun. They're going to be a bit blocked I believe right now by the uh, yeah, by the fuel tanks, at least that one is. This one is in sunlight. Uh, but, alright, so then you can see our electric charge there is staying full because we don't need to do anything because we have uh, it just floating in space, basically. And the generators and the solar panels will keep generating electric charge so we can still control the uh, satellite. Alright, so that is that, and thank you guys for watching, and thank you uh, for whoever suggested that, and uh, I will be back with more Kerbal Space Program and Kerbal Space Program tutorials in the future. So again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.